Hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. Well, we got the clutch and flywheel out and it looks like that the dual mass flywheel is uh, pretty much destroyed. And uh, so that could be contributing to the problem with the engine shaking. Um, that's one of the symptoms of a bad dual mass flywheel. Uh, but anyway, in this video, I'm gonna focus on the motor because we need to figure out whether this motor needs to be rebuilt or not. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is a leak down test. And we know that the compression in cylinder number two, where the original owner had issues with misfires and that sort of thing, the compression is not quite as good as the others. Um, I think they're all around 115, and that one is maybe like 105 or something like that. So, I mean, none of them are really great. Um, so, this engine is kind of marginal to begin with. Um, and uh, the spark plugs, when analyzing them, they were good in all the cylinders except the cylinder number two, which had all been carboned up. And so, and uh, some of those misfires uh, were contributed by uh, some uh, vacuum leaks in the system. We found, I think, three or four vacuum leaks fixed it, and then, it, of course, it ran much, much better. And um, also, when I'd done the compression test, I took one of the clean plugs off the uh, of cylinder one and then exchanged it for cylinder number two and then ran it. And, uh, and then even the clean one in cylinder number two ended up a little bit dirty, not like it was before, but you could tell it was not burning as well. Um, one of the things that we haven't checked yet are the injectors, and that's something I'm going to do on a future video. Uh, but what I've done is I went ahead and uh, got a used uh, fuel rail. These injectors are a little different um, than the typical one, so these really need the fuel rail to, to do the test or kind of a side feed. You know, most injectors, you know, it's just the fuel comes in on the top and then comes out at the bottom. So um, I felt like I needed this fuel rail to, to do a test on it. Um, so anyway, that's for another video, but in this video, we're just going to confine this one uh, to the leak down test and just take a look at all the cylinders and see how consistent they are to one another. And if uh, cylinder number two does have more or more leak down and then also maybe find out why is it a valve issue or are they just bad rings, you know, that sort of thing. And that'll help us determine whether the engine needs to be rebuilt. So anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So I've already taken out, um, all the uh, coils and then also all the plugs and by the way this is the one that was really nice bright white it was in cylinder number one moved it over to cylinder number two and you can see that uh, let's see if I can get it in focus here <laughs> well you can tell it's not the bright white that it used to be in fact here's the comparison it used to look like this one and then just maybe over the course of 20 miles it turned into something that looks like this so we'll start this test here on uh, cylinder number one. So I'll go ahead and insert this tube and then I'll have to gauge up to it. Now at this point, all we're trying to do is um, get the motor positioned or this cylinder positioned with the piston on the uh, compression stroke and we want it at top dead center. So one of the easy ways to uh, find out whether it's on the compression stroke or not is just to observe this gauge while turning the motor. So as I turn the motor here, we'll watch for deflection here on the pressure gauge. And there we go, starting to go up. So now we're definitely on the compression stroke. So now I'll pull the tube out and then we can find out what our top dead center is by inserting a screwdriver. Okay, so now I just went ahead and put the screwdriver in here. We know the piston's coming up at this point and it's on the compression stroke. So we'll just keep turning this and you'll see that the uh, screwdriver comes out. And there it starts to go back in. So we want to be right there at top dead center. And the reason we're doing this at top dead center on the compression stroke is because the valves are gonna all be closed in that cylinder at this point. So if they're closed, it shouldn't leak much. And if we have a bad valve, for instance, um, if we have a bad intake valve, we should uh, see air coming out of the intake. If it's a bad exhaust valve, uh, we'll see it coming out of the back portion of the exhaust. If it's just uh, bad rings, then uh, it's gonna come out of the crankcase. Maybe we could pull one of these uh, tubes off here and then see if we could detect some air coming out. So anyway, this uh, leak down, it'll not only determine the health of the motor, but also if there is an issue, what would be contributing to the problem? Okay, so go ahead and thread in our uh, gauge again here. Okay, 
Now let's get the uh, leak down gauges uh, calibrated. So the way that I'm gonna do that is uh, we'll hook it up to the compressor here and not the motor yet. So I'll get it hooked up here. And then, uh, let's see, I'll back this thing off completely. And uh, we'll turn on the pressure here from the uh, compressor. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and twist this. And this is the pressure here coming from the compressor, the regulated pressure. So we'll crank this up until we get to 0% here. So keep tweaking that up. And a little bit more. Okay, so if the engine was perfectly sealed and we had no leaks, leakage at all, this would indicate 0% leak down. Now you notice here on the regulated pressure gauge, we're right here at 30. So we're just gonna go ahead and lock it in here, like so. Okay, now we can go ahead and hook this up to the motor. And uh, wow, that actually looks pretty good. I don't really hear much, but it is leaking down a little bit. Looks like maybe about 7%. So cylinder number one is very good. So now we'll just go ahead and repeat this procedure on all the cylinders and then we'll make a comparison. Okay, so here are the results of our leak down test. Uh, numbers, uh, cylinder number one was the best, obviously, at 7%. Uh, second best, uh, 11% on cylinder three. Terrible on cylinder two and of 17% and 13% on cylinder four. So not only is uh, this bad, they're also not very consistent. So it's looking like we're going to need to tear, tear this motor down and do a rebuild on it. Well, the combination of the compression test and the leak down test uh, kind of showed us where we need to go next with this motor, which is an engine rebuild, which I was really hoping not to do. I was really hoping we could just put the new clutch and flywheel on the car and put her back in and call it a day, but no. So anyway, that is going to be on delay. Uh, obviously, we need to give this motor attention and um, I've done rebuilds on these Subi motors before, so if you're interested in seeing that in any detail, um, I'll post a link to the end of this video, and uh, you can check those out if you like. So I'm going to keep everything I do on this motor pretty brief, and uh, just some updates every now and then, and uh, until we can get back to getting the clutch back into the car and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, I think I'm going to call this quits at this point, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.